are the main users or the main types of people buying Ethereum name service addresses? And what types of things are they doing with ENS addresses? Hi there, my name is Brian Collins. Welcome to the NFT Brief. So I've been fascinated by the ENS address craze and all of the array of use cases for these Web 3.0 uh, domains and naming conventions. So in this video, I'm going to walk through the seven different types of users for ENS addresses or ENS NFTs and what they're doing with them. Hope you enjoy the content in this video. If you do, hit thumbs up. And if you want to get more videos like this, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you haven't got an ENS address yet, or you're wondering what you can use your EN address for, do check out some of the other videos that I've published recently that explain what ENS addresses are, how you can use them, and the array of use cases that are out there. Now let's dive in. So the first type of user who's picking up an ENS address is somebody like me or somebody who's perhaps an NFT influencer or somebody involved in the Web 3.0 space or who's dipping their toes into it. They're buying an ENS address because they want to use it as their personal identity uh, on social media. So, for example, on Twitter. And they also want to use it for their handle uh, on OpenSea. So this is my ENS, my personal ENS address, brianjcollins.eat, and I've used this on Twitter. And I've used this on a couple of other Web 3.0 platforms as well. Now, I've logged into OpenSea with a, my software wallet, which is actually, actually holds a different ENS address. And you can see here that it has my ENS address here because I've set it as the primary address for the wallet. So in other words, that's the first type of user who's picking up an ENS address. They're using it for their personal ID in Web 3.0. And sometimes that ID, you know, they can be doxxed or they can be doxing themselves. So I'm being clear about who I am. In other cases, uh, somebody will use an ENS address like this person here, hdl.eat, as a type of pseudonym. So to represent their Web 3.0 identity or their Web 3.0 avatar. If you're interested in how you can set uh, your ENS address as your Twitter profile and on OpenSea, for OpenSea, just uh, set the ENS address as your uh, primary address inside of the ENS dashboard. And I have a video where I do that um, so you can follow me step by step. So do check that out. And for Twitter, all you do is just update your Twitter name to your ENS address rather than your actual handle. And you can do that via the profile section. The second type of user picking up ENS addresses is companies who want to build a brand in Web 3.0. So back in uh, August of 2021, there was a story on Coindesk about how Budweiser picked up the ENS NFT beer.eat. Now at the time, Ethereum was trading for over $3,000, so they paid 30 eat and that worked out as $95,000. So we worked a little bit less today at the time of recording uh, this video. And they also have been tweeting about their purchase. So you can see here on Budweiser USA, um, they're saying probably nothing NFT beer fest and a beer.eat on a can. So they're using it as a type of branding uh, in the Web 3.0 space. Now, there's nothing really on the beer.eat uh, address at the moment. So when you go here, it doesn't really resolve to anything. So they haven't built anything on it yet. But one potential use case companies like Budweiser could do is for subdomains. So on this site here, you can see all the brands that Budweiser owns. Uh, so they have Bex, they have Brahma. Uh, they also have Budweiser, Budweiser Light. Cass, um, dozens and dozens of different types of beers, Corona, and so on. So they could potentially set up a subdomain for each one of their brands. So they could go to corona.beer.eat, and then you could have bex.beer.eat, and so on. And then they could build on each one of those subdomains at some point. They could potentially build a site, or they could potentially use it as a way to sell their beer, or just simply to build their brand. So it could be a way of future-proofing their involvement in Web 3.0. The next type of user picking up user address addresses uh, could potentially be those from Web 2.0 who've experienced flipping domains, or those on Web 3.0 who are looking at how flipping domains work and trying to do the same thing. So there's a good article here on Namecheap, which is a domain registrar, about some of the top domain sales from last year. So Christmas.com sold for just over $3 million, Angel.com for $2 million, Exodus for just under $2 million, uh, and all the way down. So you can see here there's lots of uh, seven and six figure sales. Now, somebody who's bought and sold domains as well, uh, it's not easy flipping domains and Web 2.0 because many of the good domains are taken. But if you can find a good one, then you can potentially get a lot for it. And if you go over to uh, GoDaddy, uh, you can also see what a domain is potentially worth in Web 2.0. So you simply click on the domain name section, click search for domains, and I'm just going to type in beer because uh, I guess that's what we were talking about a few moments ago. And um, you'll see that I'll need to pay at least $5 million to do that, but I'm not going to do that. Um, but there is some other alternatives that I could pick up with some valuations. And there is a secondary market on GoDaddy as well. 
so the takeaway here is that now the ENS community is also picking up potentially valuable domains like beer or whatever it is um, with the goal of potentially selling it for a profit later on, perhaps to another company or an influencer or a bigger business. The next type of user picking up ENS domains is a user who wants to join one of the many clubs that has popped up in the ENS space. So if you want to learn more about these clubs, I'd recommend using the site ens.vision. Uh, and there's lots of different uh, ENS clubs um, that vary depending on the number of letters or uh, numbers in the ENS domain. And you can see what the floor price is as well. So there's the three digit club, which is the most valuable club because there's only 999 of them and they have a floor price of 8.5 each. And there's a 0x99 club, which is basically this club, just appended with 0x. Slightly lower price, but definitely uh, valuable as well. Um, and then this club popped up where they're uh, using emoji numbers. There's the All Vowel Club. There's the 10K Club, uh, which became really popular. So basically the 10K Club is uh, four numbers rather than uh, three numbers, like in the 99 Club. There's a three letter first name club, the 2X Club. Uh, there's a Pokemon Club, um, the Timekeepers Club. The Timekeepers one caught my attention. So basically they have uh, an ENS NFT for every hour of the day. So 01H23. 01H24, 01H25, and so on. Um, so there's 550 owners of the timekeepers and the collection has 1,440 NFTs, which would correspond to uh, the minutes uh, in the day. So if you go onto this site, you can see all of the, the array of clubs that have popped up over the past few weeks. And it is just astonishing to see the growth of the ENS space. Um, and they all have different entry points as well. So I mean, 0.08 each floor price is really affordable for everyone. Um, whereas obviously not many of us are going to be buying an ENS address for 8.5 ETH floor price. So depending on how much liquidity you have or what appeals to you, uh, you could be picking up an ENS address to join one of these clubs. And of course there is Discord and Twitter communities related to them as well. The next type of user picking up ENS addresses is somebody who owns a premium NFT and they want to create an EN address to uh, improve their social flexing and to make it more distinct and more unique. Uh, and also because they want to join the, the club that I talked about a few moments ago. So to show you what I mean, I have here Board Ape Yacht Club. And if you've been following Board Ape Yacht Club, you'll know that like many blue chip NFTs, each of the NFTs in this collection are numbered and they correspond to you know the 10,000 pieces in the Board the Ape Yacht Club. So you hear, I can see here one of them is 3368. So if I owned the four digit ENS 3368, I could uh, then create a subdomain called bayc.3368.eat and then I could use this as opposed to we cement my uh, web 3.0 or, or identity that's built around this particular board ape even more. And I can create subdomains for each NFT that I own. So if I own a Clonex, I could change it to this. Or if I own the world of women, I could change it to this. Um, so this is a good way of uh, connecting your ENS address to maybe your NFT purchases that you care about or that you have some attachment to. Um, and there is obviously some people buying e who bought ENS addresses because they want to sell the ENSs to, to board ape holders or to holders of other NFTs as well. So they're looking to you know get an arbitrage or to profit on getting into the ENS address craze first. Famous people, influencers, influence. and celebrities are also picking up ENS addresses as part of their personal branding. If you want to learn who these are and what addresses they've picked up, check out at Eat Leaderboard on Twitter. And they also have a website where you can filter through uh, some of the high profile ENS address purchases. So Paris Hilton, who's involved in the NFT space, has parishilton.eat. Uh, um, you can also see some other examples here. So Vitalik.eat, uh, obviously he's been you know, advocating for the ENS addresses for a long time now. Um, some of the other ones that stood out to me was Brian Armstrong of Coinbase. Um, and another one that stood out when I was going uh, through the wrist was Jay Williams. Um, and then if I go further down, uh, you, you or if you go further down through the list, you'll start finding um, influencers from NFT Twitter. You'll also start finding um, artists who created generative art or who created NFT collections that have performed quite well. And you'll start finding some celebrities and musicians and people who've just been interested in the NFT space. Um, so I'd recommend checking out this website because you can see which uh, celebrities and influencers have the most followers and what their ENS address is and how it corresponds to their Twitter profile. I suppose the key tip for this is if you do pick up your personal ENS address, um, do put it on your Twitter profile because um, it is a way of building up, you know, some social flexing and, you know, linking your Web 2.0 or Web 3.0 identity. 
The final type of user picking up ENS addresses is project owners, project creators, and NFT artists who want an ENS address that corresponds to the name of their NFT project. So to show you an example, I have here cyberkongs.eat, and this is owned by the cyberkongs. So this ENS address corresponds to the cyberkongs NFT collection. And because they own this ENS address, then they can give a subdomain to each one of the NFTs within this collection, and then they could potentially give it to people who pick up uh, or who purchase the NFTs, and that can give those NFTs more value. It's also a good tool for branding as well. So if you, you know, you're running a new NFT project, um, if you own the ENS address, you know, it does improve the credibility of the project as well. And you could also see how uh, potentially artists could use this. So if they have a 10 piece or 100 piece collection, they could buy an ENS address that corresponds to the name of their collection. Uh, and then people could use that to, uh, you know, learn more about the collection and see what's inside of it. Now, obviously, the use cases for ENS addresses are still being developed and there's lots more to come. Um, so if you're interested in learning more about ENS addresses, uh, do subscribe to the channel. But I hope you walked through, in, or hope you enjoyed this video where I walked through the seven different types of users for ENS addresses today. And ask yourself, where do you fit uh, when you're picking up your ENS address? If you did enjoy the video, hit thumbs up. And if you want to get more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.